Okay, hi everyone, I'm back. Uh, Oscars are over, done a million movie reviews in a row, and I thought I'd just catch up with books. So the last thing I did, I did a review of Lincoln in the Bardo, and I said this would be my next book, Jade City by Fonda Lee. And I really didn't like it. And uh, it's hard to pick why I didn't like it. I mean, it's won a lot of awards up for the Nebula. Uh, Godfather meets Magic, but I found um, the plotting was quite good, but I could pick where it was going. And the prose is, to, I found really turgid in that it seemed to me like Fonda Lee had to work to get every word out and wore me out. So I didn't get to the end of it. Um, so I picked up this instead, which is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames. And this is a really fun book. It's a debut. Um, and I read a lot of fantasy and a lot of it really I don't like, as I just explained with Jade City. So uh, what I liked about this was from the word uh, that you began with, it just sung that this guy knew what he was doing. And that is that he was taking all the tropes of Dungeons and Dragons and uh, you know, known fantasy kind of things, you, uh, he would set this story in where the metaphor is, instead of being an adventuring party, you're a band, you're a heavy metal band, and they've got to get the band back together. So a little bit like Spinal Tap meets Lord of the Rings. Um, so the character, it really sings with the characters. The main protagonist is slow hand Clay Cooper. And I'll just show you, see how he's got, he's the first guy I've ever known in fantasy whose main kind of thing is the shield. He hasn't got a weapon, he often loses his weapon. And he's got this shield which you kind of cut out of a uh, giant tree, like a tree ant or something. And um, it's pretty magnificent, everyone knows it. And he's in a group and you know, everyone's, you know, like the lead singer is Golden Gabriel. Um, and then you've got uh, Ganelon with an axe. He's obviously the lead guitarist and he's like a Conan guy. The drummer is Matrix, who's got two uh, like short swords. He's the thief. And then you've got Moog, which is an obvious play on the word for a keyboard. Uh, and he's the wizard and he's a bit crazy. And um, they're all interesting characters and they all have their moment to shine. But think of it this way, Nicholas seems it's like this, like you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and you're having a lot of fun and in the corner is Nicholas Seams and he's writing everything down and chronicling it and so you get the good and the bad. So it's a little bit too long, um, like any D&D campaign. And the pacing is not bad but it could do with an edit. Some of the humour is a bit groany. I didn't need so much the heavy metal band metaphor, I, I get it, okay. Um, what I do love about it is he has used everything from Dungeons and Dragons, like I don't know what the trademark situation was, but he's got the most D&D &D, uh, monsters I've ever seen in a book, which isn't a D&D &D book. And what I loved about that was the world seemed so alive and it really seemed kind of like the place where D&D &D adventures occur because you're always wondering how do all these monsters live? The ecology couldn't work because everything's so dangerous and poisonous and horrible. And he doesn't worry about that at all. It's just a place to have good adventures. And I really enjoyed that. Um, so for a debut, I thought it was quite, quite self-assured. Um, the only problem I would say is for a fantasy, there doesn't seem to be much of a price for heroics. Wounds heal remarkably quickly. And um, so it's not like Game of Thrones where you do one nice little thing and you get butchered for it. Uh, in this, you kind of can skate through a bit. So we'll see, maybe they'll pay a cost in later books. So it's the first of a series. I think it's gonna probably be a trilogy. I'll definitely be reading the next books, which is a big vote of confidence because I don't often get to say that anymore. Um, what I really did like also about it is um, there's a character who I didn't talk about who they meet. So there's this big D&D joke, which if you've ever played D&D or know anyone, no one ever plays bards. No one wants to have a bard in there because they're kind of boring. And uh, in this, every bard who was with the uh, band uh, died, which is pretty funny. Anyway, they meet eventually this uh, bard who's named Kit. And he's Kit the, uh, I can't remember, I think it's the Undying or Never Undying or something like that. And the whole joke is he's turned into this uh, undead and so he can't be killed. 
And so that turns into a really interesting way to solve some problems which a normal human couldn't do or a normal character. And But also what it does is he has been alive for thousands of years. So what happens is you'll go to a ruin and he'll go, I remember visiting here and that was a great marketplace and all that. And so that exposition, which is normally really clunky, he just does very matter of fact and it really works and I love that character I love that idea it may be so much that I want to maybe try playing a bard in my next D&D adventure but probably I'll sober up before then the other thing is this is a common trope if you talk to anyone who's ever played D&D there's always this joke about owl bears and I know we had it in our group and then we met other people and who play D&D or role playing or whatever, and they'll make a joke about Albert's. And you, you always think it's only your group. And the, it's a running gag through this whole book about Albert's. And I just found it hilarious and I really enjoyed it. So this is one, look, if you like fantasy, he really picks apart lots of fantasy tropes. So I, if it was your first fantasy book, I don't think it'd be that great, but I really enjoyed it. Now, the next book, um, if you wanted to read along with me, which I don't think, because I go it's all over the shop, and again, I do it with this, which is Brighton by Michael Harvey. Now, um, this is a uh, you know, crime noir set in Boston. Now, Boston is my the city I'd live in if I was in America. I always love Boston, it's such a cinematic city, it's in movies, it's in books. I grew up in like the seedy part of Sydney and uh, knew criminals and had a bit of a criminal family and so I love reading books uh, about crime but especially in Boston it really feels like this guy Michael Harvey who I've never read before is really nailing how the city works and um, I'm only a couple pages into it but already you go okay this guy knows what he's doing so I'll tell you about that next time so if you like what I'm doing plenty of TV and movies coming up um, because now we're going to start getting the popcorn movies a little bit more. Um, just subscribe, hit the bell, and then you'll always know what I'm doing. And I'm on Twitter at Guru Eden. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, bye.